Dear compatriots and friends, I wish to convey warmest congratulations and militant greetings of solidarity to all the patriotic and democratic individuals, personalities, organizations, and institutions that have formed the People's Movement for Truth, Justice, and Change, and are now carrying out the People's Caravan for Truth, Justice, and Change, which the PM TJC is launching today. I'm sure that this day overshadows the August 21, 1971 grenade attack on the Liberal Party rally, which was engineered and used by Marcos to proclaim the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus on the same night and prepared the, the martial law proclamation of September 21, 1972. August 21, 1983 was also the day when the Marcos fascist regime murdered Nino Aquino at the Manila International Airport and unwittingly caused the gigantic mass actions that eventually overthrew the fascist dictator in 1986. Your mission is of the highest importance and urgency. We must recall and reinvigorate the fighting will of the Filipino people during the 50th anniversary of the martial law proclamation that totally imposed fascist dictatorship on the Philippines and inflicted unprecedented oppression and exploitation on the people until it was overwhelmed on February 25, 1986 by mass uprisings of the people. We must be inspired by the struggles and sacrifices of revolutionary heroes and martyrs. Once more, we are driven to wage resistance against the Marcos legacy of treason, tyranny, gross and systematic human rights violations, and unbridled corruption because the junior of the fascist dictator Marcos has been fraudulently installed in power by automated electoral cheating and is tasked by U.S. imperialism and the discredited Duterte regime to continue the brutal campaign of military suppression of the Filipino people under the terms of the so-called anti-terror law, which is in fact a law of state terrorism under the pretext of anti-communism and anti-terrorism. We are confronting today a regime of the worst political dynasties headed by the Marcoses and Dutertes. They are hell-bent on violating the national and democratic rights of the people and are using their ill-gotten power and wealth to further subject the people to gross and systematic human rights violations, engage in the worst forms of corruption and deception, and aggravate further the crisis of the semi-colonial and semi-feudal ruling system. While unleashing brutality and corruption against the people, the Marcos Duterte regime continues to spread the lie that the Marcos fascist dictatorship was a golden age and that its colossal crimes must be whitewashed, honored, and perpetuated. Unfortunately for the current regime, it cannot solve the rapidly worsening crisis, but can only aggravate it and goad the people to fight back and advance on the road of the new democratic revolution against the escalating conditions of oppression and exploitation. By way of advancing the people's struggle for national and social liberation, I fully agree with uh, the people's movement that the people's caravan must carry out a series of activities to educate the people on what truly happened during martial law and combat those anti-national and anti-democratic forces that engage in historical distortion. I therefore agree to add my voice to those who speak at the current launch of the People's Caravan. I witnessed how Ferdinand E. Marcos prepared for and carried out his scheme of fascist dictatorship since his first presidential term and how the youth and the broad masses of the people waged resistance. I had a vantage point as a participant in the great effort to carry out the people's democratic revolution against U.S. imperialism, 
domestic feudalism and bureaucrat capitalism, which the Marcos fascist dictatorship wanted to preserve. My timely statements are in the archives of the corporate newspapers, Progressive Review, Ang Bayan, and other publications. They are also in the books that are republished from time to time, like The Struggle for National Democracy, Philippine Society and Revolution, Victory to Our People's War, Anti-Revisionist Essays, and Foundation for Resuming the Philippine Revolution. In February 1968, an attempt was made on my life, but I was able to ward off the knife-wielding assailants who inflicted a stab wound on my right arm. From the time that I went underground in December 1968, I faced so many risks of death from military campaigns against me, but I enjoyed all the activities that brought about the re-emergence of the revolutionary movement. After my capture on November 10, 1977, I had to undergo outright physical torture for some months and psychological torture through solitary confinement for more than five years out of my more than eight years of detention. My book, Detention and Defiance Against Dictatorship, Volume 4, 1977-1986, document my suffering and struggle, especially legal struggle, before two military commissions while I was in the fascist prison of Marcos. My book of poems, Prison and Beyond, selected poems 1958-1983, also reflected my prison and torture experiences. But I would be happy that soon after the overthrow of the fascist dictator in 1986, I would receive the Southeast Asia Right Award for Poetry. I felt rewarded for engaging in revolutionary resistance and contributing to the eventual overthrow of the fascist dictatorship by the people. Even after the downfall of Marcos, I continued to fight his legacy of treason, fascist dictatorship, and corruption, and criticized the post-Marcos pseudo-democratic regimes for failing to punish the fascist dictator and his closest accomplices in crime. That included his cronies and his close family members, and likewise for failing to recover all or most of their loot. I hold U.S. imperialism and the local exploiting classes accountable for saving Marcos and letting him and his cohorts go unpunished. I am proud to declare that even after Marcos was brought to the U.S., I participated in the human rights case filed against him by around 10,000 victims of human rights violations. I have consistently held Marcos accountable for all the crimes that he committed and the consequences of these up to now. Thus, some months ago, I accepted immediately to keynote the program of Tangol Kasaysayan, initiated by highly respected historians and social activists. I have also arranged with the International Network for Philippine Studies the release of my book on the Marcos fascist dictatorship on time for the 50th anniversary of the Marcos Proclamation of Martial Law. I welcome all initiatives and efforts to preserve the history of the Marcos fascist dictatorship, to condemn its grievous crimes and discourage restoration or repetition of the fascist legacy. Thus, I eagerly join the People's Movement to conduct studies and activities that remind us of the heinous crimes against humanity under martial law and the resistance of the Filipino people. We must encourage everyone to stand united for full national independence and democracy and call for resistance and change against the evil scheme to restore the Marcos fascist dictatorship. We must participate in the people's caravan and carry out the information and education campaign that includes articles, speeches, forums, magazines, books, film showings, plays, art exhibits, and other cultural activities in order to enlighten uh, the youth and entire people on the evil Marcos legacy of fascism and plunder under martial law and the current crisis situation of the Filipino people. We must debunk 
and fight against the fake news, historical distortion, and denialism, and make our call for truth, transparency, accountability, and good governance resound with utmost clarity. We welcome the social services to further strengthen the capability of the youth and the entire people to assert the democratic and civil rights. The social services include the following, Know Your Rights Forum, Paralegal Training, Social Media Training, Cultural Workshop, Leadership Training, First Aid and Psychosocial Therapy and others and must be available especially when collective actions are being carried out to stand for truth, justice and change. We anticipate campaign activities such as the following, Black Shirt Day, Candle Lighting, Mass for Truth and Justice, Walk for Peace and Justice and others. The biggest anticipated program to date is the upcoming 50th anniversary of martial law on September 21, 2022. We must appreciate and ensure that the People's Movement for Truth, Justice and Change will issue and promote the people's agenda for the attainment of full national independence, democracy, social justice, economic development through genuine land reform and national industrialization, expansion of social services, a national scientific and mass-oriented culture, independent foreign policy, and international solidarity of all peoples for national liberation, democracy, and socialism against imperialism and all reaction. Thank you.